everyone, welcome back to Calliope Flower Farm. Uh, today I'm going to be taking you around the garden and showing you what's growing here at the end of April. Um, we've had a bunch of 20 degree Celsius days, which is like in the 70s to 80s, um, and it's just been a complete 360 from the like 5 degree temperatures we were having previously. So everything's exploded into growth and I'm just spending every possible minute that I can out in the garden right until the sun goes down or until I get called inside for dinner. So here I have some hardening off um, transplants. I am not very good at hardening things off. Usually I just kind of plonk them outside um, because usually there's like a, a big trek that I have to make with all my seedlings. Like I can't just take them in and out of the greenhouse. Um, like for example, right now I have my garden in the backyard and then my seeds are in the laundry room in the front of the house downstairs. So I have to like bring them all upstairs through the whole house and then out the back door. So. I am a little bit tough love when it comes to hardening things off, um, and I, it, it seems to be okay. Um, obviously if you can harden things off, do that. If you can't, it's not the end of the world. Um, just make sure that you're not transplanting them on like a searing hot day or when you have low, low temperatures in the, in the forecast. Make sure temperatures are like, you know, about the same temperature as your house, and then you should be good. I also... Um, if I can't harden things off by bringing them inside and outside, which you're supposed to do, I will just leave them in their pots and in their seedling trays for a couple of days because I think that's, you know, they're having the temperature shock, but they're not having the um, transplant shock as well. So these are my zinnias. I'm so excited because I've never planted this many zinnias before. Um, and I'm, you know, because of all the cut flower gardening that I'm doing, I'm really, you know, taking care to um, thin them out properly and transplant them properly and feed them properly. And they're just, they're doing so well. Um, so I have, I wrote on these with ballpoint pen, which don't do that. It'll, it'll wash away. Um, so I have some meteor in these two, um, and then Eldorado. Uh, this one has pink senorita. This one is also pink senorita. And then these two here, I think are illumination. They might also be a mix of saved, saved zinnias. That's kind of just my rainbow zinnias. Um, these are my morning glories, Ipamia, um, cardinal climbers. So they're a bright red morning glory. And I've just, um, you can see I've just um, pinched these off. They were getting super overgrown under the grow lights. So I've pinched those off. I left a couple just to kind of compare the difference. Left a couple growing and pinched a couple off. Um, and these are doing really well. They do have a little bit of, either they were too close to the grow light or there's not enough nitrogen in the soil. Um, I did use really high quality potting compost so that it shouldn't be a nutrient issue, but I think they need to get transplanted out because they're just, they're ready for it. They're screaming to be let out. So here is my tiny little herb garden. So the plan with the herb garden was to put it in raised beds, but you know, it's just not a priority right now to be spending money on, on things like raised beds. And raised beds are just so expensive. Um, so this is what we're doing with right now. Herbs love to be in terracotta because they uh, keeps the soil really dry and aerated. Um, so this is the time that we've had now for about four, four or five years. We've had this time. It's lovely. I just dumped some potting compost on top for one of my seedlings. Um, this oregano is coming back really nice and strong from uh, last year. I did not start this from seed. I got this as a transplant. Um, but I did sprinkle on some dill seed here to kind of fill up this pot yesterday and it's dried out really fast um because this deck is in full sun so i'm gonna have to be a little bit more diligent about watering that and um, this i think is this is some uh provincial thyme like from provence in france and um, it's one of like a different variety of thyme oh this sage is like really white this is a sage from last year as well. Um, I did start this from seed actually, which is pretty cool. I started it from seed in February, 2020, and this is how it's looking. And then this is my little struggling rosemary. <laughs> I started this from seed uh, last year as well. So like these were started at the same time. You can see they're, they're similar. I do really hope that they bush out and become perennial because that would be um, really, just really cool. I don't know, there's something about growing perennials from seed that's just really beautiful. Um, yeah, and they overwintered outside, so they did they did great. And then I have some parsley um, and some more dill growing and some chamomile in these pots here. 
Oh, and this is the potting compost that I'm using for my seeds. Um, yeah, it's great. There is, I'll show you a little bit what it looks like. Um, there is quite a bit of like wood chips inside. So you do want to kind of take those out again. I'm not like super precious about this, um, but it is really nice and light and it has like pretty ethically sourced peat in it, which is good. Um, you know, really light and fluffy. Um, and it has nutrients. So if you haven't seen, um, Jessica did a video on the differences between using potting compost and seed starting mix, and that was super informative. So I will link that down below, but I did both this year and I actually really hated the seed starting mix. It was mostly peat and it dried out so quickly and then rehydrating it was so difficult, which happens with peat. You have to like really keep it moist because if it dries out, it gets really hydrophobic. So, and it was also just so expensive. It was like $20 for a bag. Um, so this stuff is like, um, and it was a much smaller bag. So this stuff is like, you know, less than, less than half the price of the seed starting mix and I actually like it better. And it's just kind of multi-purpose. Like I use it for topping up containers. Um, I used it for my house plants and yeah, it's doing great. Um, I do have to start some beets and some more chard. And then I also have to start some salad greens. I'm just gonna just kind of sprinkle these around. This is like the classic YouTube gardener. Tea on a chair. All right, so um, this is one of my cut flower garden beds and um, it has perennials at the front. I walked you through this last time so I won't repeat that again. The differences from the last video is that I separated out, divided up, and planted my um, schizostylus, stylus which is the, I think it's called a river lily. Um, it's bright red um, and I planted that there so that will come up in a nice row. Um, I did not do a good job, story of my life, I did not do a good job at marking where I planted the bulbs here. So I'm just kind of like holding my breath and waiting for them to come up. Um, the garlic's looking really strong and then I have my beautiful clematis growing up here. This is like, I put this here before planting the cut flower garden so it's really like just plonked in the middle. Um, but you know, that's how we roll, just kind of beautiful straight lines and then just random things plonked in the middle of those beautiful straight lines. What else is new? There's some anemones. Oh, there's an anemone bud. This is the first anemone bud that I've found. <gasps> Beautiful. I don't know if this is um, a blue poppy or a pink one. And another anemone coming up here. This one doesn't have any buds yet, but a couple anemones that I dotted in in the fall. Um, my Coreopsis. I love this one. I've had this for th two years now. Um, it's the Coreopsis Darling Clementine. It's a beautiful apricot color. Congratulations, little baby pea. You managed my neighbor's super ugly uh, chairs. I hate them so much, but you know, we got this house for a good deal and those are our downstairs neighbors and they have ugly chairs, but you know, it's fine. Can you tell, can you tell that I'm fine with it? Um, so this is actually something I do want to talk about. So I have this, I don't know if you can see this fishing line here. And um, so this property beside us is beautiful, um, but the deer like freely graze in their property, um, which is great, but I wanted to um, make a barrier above this really tiny, like three foot fence. Um, so I am experimenting with fishing line. It's just super cheap, super easy, invisible basically. Um, um, so I've attached this to my new um, remesh panels that I replaced my old fencer wire with. This is a 9 gauge remesh panel that I'm using for trellises. It's much thicker. I think my other one was a 14 gauge. Um, much thicker. It was really difficult to get in my car, but I managed. And then in these pots I have some sweet peas coming up. My sweet peas are struggling this year. But, you know, there's a tiny bok choy struggling as well. Um, and then I have sugar magnolia tendril peas all down this row, interplanted with some sweet peas. The sweet pea, I actually inadvertently uh, pruned it, and now it has little side shoots coming off, which is great. Um, yeah, and the bok choy is puny, but doing pretty well. Um, I am going to plant tomatoes in these grow bags. That's what the trellises are mostly for. I mean, they're also for the peas, but... 
Oh, congrats to hold on. Wow, it's holding on. It always looks so funny, just like reaching for the trellis. So yeah, so the peas are gonna climb up here and then my plan usually is to put the tomatoes in after the peas are done, kind of. I mean, the tomatoes will kind of bush out and you know, like I said, I really like planning and bullet journaling and straight lines, but I also kind of just wing it sometimes and just bung things in wherever and just hope that everyone is friends with each other. <laughs> and then this uh, bed, you can see, is quite nice and organized, even with markers. I went a little bit crazy yesterday, like marking everything. Um, so I have a row of sunflowers at the back here. Those are doing pretty well, all transplanted. And then yesterday I planted dahlias um, here. So those are all planted. They are 18 inches apart, the rows, and then within the rows, the, bowl, the um, tubers, pardon me, are 12 inches apart. And then filling up this row, because I have 15 dahlia tubers, and then the dahlia tubers turn into cosmos here, and I transplanted these cosmos yesterday, and they look like they're doing really well. Congratulations, little baby cosmos. These ones are doing less well because I kind of stepped on them, <laughs> um, because I don't really do pathways, because it's a teeny tiny garden. So I just kind of have to like, step like a little nymph around all of my plants. And sometimes I uh, am less graceful than I think I am. Um, these zinnias are almost ready to be um, pinched out so that they branch, because right now they're pretty, pretty single stemmed, <laughs> but they're doing, they're doing really well. These are the few zinnias that actually germinated the first round of zinnias that I sowed. I had something weird happen with my zinnias, and I ended up having to resow them. Um, so yeah, uh, the zinnias that are up on the deck right now, I'm going to transplant those into this empty row and then probably more cosmos that are germinating inside right now in the very front row. So this is going to be like, there's also some poppies that I think are germinating. Cross your fingers for my poppies because it was not looking good there for a while. Um, but yeah, sunflowers, poppies, dahlias, cosmos, and zinnias in this bed. You can see I like work the ground pretty hard. <laughs> putting in as much stuff as I can. And then so around these beds, I have um, more fishing line fence for the deer. Um, so I just stuck these bamboo stakes into the ground uh, at the outside of the bed. And then here I just have one at about 18 inches tall, um, just so I can like easily like step over it to work in the garden. Um, and then this one, I have another, I have a three foot as well as the 18 inch. I just learned that this style of chair is called a steamer chair or a Titanic chair because these are the chairs style that they had on the Titanic. And yeah, it's a really comfy chair. So highly recommend. Um, I also ran the twine in this bed. Um, so I ran the twine from old plant labels that I had. These are obviously not what's growing here right now, but I used these old plant markers to attach the twine at each end of the bed, um, just to help me because my brain is, I'm just not very good at straight lines. Just a little too gay for that, I guess. Um, but so yeah, I used that to guide the straight lines. And then, yeah, I have three varieties of kale popping up, doing pretty well. Let's go see. And then again, I have the, fishing line here as well. How are the little baby kales doing? Yeah, there's my little baby kale. That is a um, lacinato kale. This one is a curly scotch kale. And then there's some um, um, red Russian kale. And they go pretty much all the way down there. Uh, and then, oh yeah, and then I have oriole orange chard here. It's, uh, it's kind of struggling. Um, but it's doing okay. I'm going to re-sew, because these were transplanted, I'm going to direct sew some at the end of this row as well. Um, and then I have uh, some gold rush squash, patty pan squash, and a Guatemalan blue squash, which I'm really excited to try. Oh, and this is my pride and joy, my swing. I love my swing so much. I've always wanted a swing. And last summer I got myself a swing. And then this is Ahsoka's mountain that she is allowed to climb and dig and destroy all of the plants to her heart's content. 
So here you can see the fishing line. This is my California tree poppy. I am so happy that this baby pulled through. Um, when we moved here, uh, when we moved here last summer, I had dug this up because it was in my garden. And I put it in the garden, in the landscape, because I knew they didn't like to be transplanted. So I was like, okay, this will be its permanent spot. Obviously not thinking about the fact that we were renting and probably gonna move. So when I dug this up, it just, hated life it completely flopped over it like turned gray i didn't i thought it was completely gone um but yeah it's made a full recovery so i'm really excited for some blooms on this baby so this was the original stem from the first year um, and you can tell this is kind of dead now um, and then this growth it put off last season and then it's you know having more growth from those and then down here is the new growth from this season so kind of every year it puts out new growth from the bottom here and then also builds on the foliage from last year these are the purple emperor nasturtiums super excited for those and um, this is my chocolate cosmos coming back for its second year um, this is Zoshneria um, Hummingbird Trumpet, I think it's called. It's really pretty. Um, again, does not like being transplanted, so I transplanted them. This one's doing pretty okay, uh, but this one is not loving life. Some more nasturtiums. So my plan with the nasturtiums is to have them um, kind of like up here and then have them kind of cascading down over the balcony because I think that will look really pretty. I need to trellis this clematis because I always do this and I always like have such a good plan for trellising things and then uh, push comes to shove and I'm without a trellis so it is holding on right now to the deer fencing. Um, yeah, it is. It's having a, having a bit of a hard time. Um, so I'm gonna have to get that. I think I'm gonna, I have one more uh, remesh panel over there that I think I'm going to put an arch in the middle of my tomatoes so it'll be like the 16 feet trellis and then in the middle of that there'll be an arch coming like right there and I think that's where I'm going to put this clematis so stay tuned for that but yeah these are mostly all just bulbs oh yeah this is my um aramaris coming up it's my first time growing these really excited just like really excited for everything <laughs> so obnoxious oh yeah and these guys just sprouted i wasn't sure if they were going to make a comeback on a kstrom uh, fascination it has like really cool palmate foliage with like big lavender flower spikes so yeah and it's my first time seeing it kind of emerge from the ground because i got it as a perennial um as a pretty established perennial last year so it's my first time seeing it come back and some anemones, my crocosmia compost. <laughs> and this is my little, my little fountain. I'm trying to like set up more seating areas around. And got some carrots in here. No germination yet from the carrots, but I'm assuming it will be pretty soon now that the weather has really warmed up. And then um, more carrots in here and then some beets as well kind of mixed in. So that is pretty much everything that's going on in the garden right now. I'm hoping to do a video like this every week. Um, sorry if it's kind of boring and repetitive. Um, it's kind of for my records as well as um, to share what's going on with you guys. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited to grow with you this season. Um, and I hope you are all doing well and staying safe. And I will see you next time. Bye.